Hello, welcome to this talk. talk. Uh, this is more like an advertisement. Introduction to our module one or introduction to our courses, our yearly courses. How to do really well in Qigong. Now, this is the slide that we used last year, the last lesson. Uh, what next? So during the class, I told them that I hope one day we'll be able to merge module one and module two together. What is module one? We name module one as Qigong Essentials, the basic things. And then we name module two as Research in Enlightenment. Yeah, it means, uh, well, if you're serious in practice, if you're really serious in Qigong practice, you should be aiming towards that. Getting into realization, enlightenment, or naturalness, you know? Enlightenment is the word commonly used in Buddhism. Realization is the term commonly used among the Confucians. And then uh, getting into naturalness, acting naturally. That's the word, that's the term used by uh, those in Taoism, or to be more specific, Lao Tzu's Taoism. Okay, so we hope that uh, we would merge the two together. Is that possible? Well, we are exploring into that very lightly. Why you must do that? Why must you do that? The truth will not change, but the approaches to it will get better. That's my understanding, right? We are moving forward. We are not going backwards, okay? So uh, the other day, I gave a talk, same talk to the Mexicans uh, and the Americans. So there was this question they asked, um, why do you say so that the truth will not change, but the approaches to it will get better? If, if you look into the history of, okay, Zen Buddhism, right? So when Zen Buddhism came to China, there was no big deal. Nothing much changes from uh, generation one to fifth generation. And then the sixth patriarch, Hui Neng, took over. There's a big change. Okay. Uh, story very long, too long. Not possible to... to... Uh, um, describe in detail, right? So that change is actually making things much easier. And then after several years, then came another monk who introduced what we call doubting method or curing. So it's very simple to ask you, where were you before the birth of your father? Don't look at it as something very simple, you know. Where were you before the birth of your father? Let's say eh, this question. Ask you to go back and think about it. So there's another change. And this is something that has been commonly recognized as a very powerful approach in Buddhism. So all in all, what I'm trying to say is that the truth is there. But the approaches to it should always get better. Instead of getting more and more complex, it should be easier and easier. And with that in mind, we intend to merge the two together, our module one and module two together. Now, so you talk about enlightenment, you talk about realization, you talk about naturalness or acting naturally. What are all these? They are actually talking about the same thing. In Buddhism, we talk about enlightenment. In uh, Confucianism, we talk about realization. In uh, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu's Taoism, 
I have to stress that this Laozi Taoism, not other Taoism. Okay. We're talking about acting naturally, or we call that naturalness. The three are the same. They are the same. What is their common denominators? All of them, when you talk about this, they are talking about a state of wholeness. What is wholeness? Okay, simply put, wholeness means the command and the outcome merge as one. You can't differentiate between the command and the outcome. Well, wow, this is difficult to explain, of course, because Lao Tzu mentioned many times that Tao can be said is not the eternal, eternal Tao. So the state of wholeness is not something that you can describe in words. Okay, now we go through some very simple experiment to understand what is wholeness. Which one is taller? Or who is taller? Woodstock or Snoopy? Give me your answer. One is Woodstock, two is Snoopy. Come on, use a keyboard. Okay, all of you got the answer. <laughs> if you keep uh, wondering, <laughs> Then sorry. <laughs> okay. Two. When you gave your answer, you gave it without any preconceived idea. Right? Look at these two. Immediately you know, of course, Snoopy is taller. Right? So you gave the answer without second thought, with, without any preconceived idea in your head. Now what about this? Number one is Queen of Garden, the Rose. Number two is Ambassador of Peace, Lily. Number three, the Holy Spirit, the Orchid. Which one is the most beautiful? Again, you must give me your answer. One, two, or three. Okay, we have one, we have two, we have three, and we have all. And we have, it depends on which one is your favorite. <laughs> now, ask yourself, when you gave the answer, when you gave the answer, one, two, or three, right? Was there a preconceived idea? Was there something like... Uh, I have to ponder, yeah, whether I think uh, to say that something related to spirit will be something very nice. Yeah, Qigong, we always talk about spiritual stuff. So Holy Spirit, maybe this is this is the, the answer. Maybe this is the correct answer. If you have that idea, that is called a preconceived idea. Or you say that, oh, the world is so chaotic now. We need something peaceful. Ambassador of Peace, Lily should be the choice. You have a preconceived idea. Because the question is very straightforward. Which one is the most beautiful? You think Rose is beautiful? That's it. I like number one. Why you like number one? Hey, I like number one. That's it. Which one is taller? Snoopy, of course. This one. Intuitive. Intuitive. That is what? That's, there's no preconceived idea. The, the idea and the answer, they merge as one. They, you don't even have to say that, oh, there's a split of a second. No. Ask you immediately, you give the answer. Straightforward, intuitive. This one? If you pondered over it. You, mm, I need to digest. Sorry. 
That is not wholeness. You have a preconceived idea before you give the answer. Understand what I mean? Can you tell the difference between the two? Right? Now, academically, after the description, you can tell the difference between number one and number two. But when you gave answer to this one, Woodstock or Snoopy, or this one, which one is the most beautiful? Can you tell what happened in your head? What happened on the mind in the two instances? Can you tell? Can you tell the difference? Yes or no? Yes is one, no is two. What's the difference? What's the difference? Can you describe the difference? Hmm? It is difficult to describe, number one. Number two, now that we say that this one if immediately you give the answer, oh, of course this is Snoopy. Instead of, ah, this fellow, very tricky. Maybe he's trying to have, uh, you know, trying to uh, trick us to think of something else. So maybe it can be Woodstock. So not intuitive. But can you feel that intuitiveness? Difficult. Why? Because this intuitiveness is very, very short. Very rapid, very short. Now, we come back to practice. Have you ever experienced wholeness during the practice? What is wholeness during the practice? It is just like this one. Command and outcome merge as one. All right, the question and answer merge. The moment you receive the question, the answer is there. All right? So when you practice Qigong, let's say we talk about something very simple down to earth. You practice open, close. Have you ever experienced such thing as wholeness? Means what? I gave a command, the arms open up. I give a command, the arm comes in. Or when I do push-pull, I give a command, pull, so the arms come in. I give a command, tweep. There's nothing in between. Have you experienced that before? That is wholeness. That is wholeness in practice. And that wholeness you can, you can prolong it. And you can have a very much deeper experience of it. Our modules, the intention of our modules is to bring those who are serious in practice into that state. Now, Going back to some very fundamental issues. What is your aim? Why do you practice Qigong? Some say I want to have fun. Nothing wrong to have fun. Some say I want to get healthier. I want to become a better instructor. I want to be a therapist or a healer. I want to reach enlightenment. It can be one, two, three, four, five. One of the one, five there. The question is, what is your plan? What is your plan? Let's say you want to have fun. You want to have more fun or just I'm happy with what I'm enjoying now. If you're happy with what you're enjoying now, there's no more issue. 
If you want to have more fun, I find this enjoyable. Enjoyable. I want to enjoy more. What are you supposed to do? You want to get healthier. What are you supposed to do? There must be a plan. Do you have a plan? I see patients, cancer patients, very frequently. Many times, we start with telling them, coming up with your plan. No, 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 I'm not going to plan for you. You have to let me know how much time do you have for your practice. Oh, I'm free. I should have no problem. Or, oh, Mr. Wing, I have to work. Nine to eight, I have to work, you know, after that. Uh, so you have to, to plan. How much time do you have for your practice? How much time is yours? Modern people are very, very busy, not like 20 years ago. How many here are practicing two hours a day? If you are practicing two hours a day, give me one. If you are practicing half an hour, uh, one hour a day, give me two. If you are practicing half an hour a day, you give me three. No four one. Huh? <laughs> I don't see anyone here. Oh, we can hint practicing two hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have been very consistent. <laughs> now, okay. We believe that the path to experience Tao, the path to experience wholeness, should get easier and easier. Okay. Now, before we go further, what is the practice at high level? What is the practice at high level? Everybody will tell you this. Oh, at high level, it is a practice of the mind. Right? The practice of the mind. So different people will have different interpretation. To us, at high level, the practice it's about a mind in the state of wholeness. What is in the state of wholeness? Means I my command and outcome they merge as one. Okay? I give a command, push, pop, arms go out. I give a command, so pull, arms will come in. That's high level. Now, and also ancients, they like to say this. Through practice after realization. Now, to realize what? What to realize? It is the state of wholeness. If you don't experience that, if you're not able to experience that, whatever that you were doing, you have to forget about it. Right? This is from Confucius. He said, if you heard about Tao, that means if you experience Tao, then whatever in your past, you should throw them away. True practice after realization means you have to realize, you have to experience wholeness. Only then you are talking about genuine or true practice. Why? Because before that, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know where you are heading to. You're not sure where you're heading to. You're not sure what is the right experience that you are supposed to perceive. You're not, suppo you are, you are not sure of what is the right experience to have. So here, we are going to introduce something that for us to experience wholeness rapidly. Now, so what do we do 
in our course. Number one is logical thinking. Logical thinking is highly needed in all practices, particularly in Qigong. <laughs> Why? Because Qigong, everyone will say, oh, faith is everything. But there's a difference between faith and blind faith. Okay? Now, what is blind faith? We'll go into that later on. Yeah? What is the logical first step? So let's say uh, my aim is to get healthier. So what is the logical first step? You are not healthier now. Okay. So what are the factors that brought you to the condition now? You sleep late, you get angry very easily, or what? You don't watch your diet. You don't exercise. What? I call those leakages. So the first thing is to stop the leak. Some leakage, some leaks are very easy to identify. Some very difficult. Yeah. So these are the simple ones. Uh, physiological problems, how you sit, you know, how you dress, how, what you wear. These are all simple things, right? Like uh, you have a rotator cuff problem. Settle it before you go and do your push-pull. Okay? Sleep. You must have sufficient sleep if you really want to take good care of yourself. So these are the things we're going to tell you. What to eat or what not to eat. Again, these are the things that we're going to tell you. Now, very important things like, why do we practice this and that? This is about blind faith. You ask most people, they will give you all funny, funny answers. Like, why do you do this? Most people, they don't, don't know. Serious. You ask them, why do you do wall squat? Oh, this is to loosen up the lumbar. How are you going to loosen the abdaba? Have you seen anyone practicing this wall squat and loosen up the lumbar? No. <laughs> See, why? Because you never really look into the practice. You never really think deep inside what is the purpose of this practice. So we tell you this. Why do you do lift here? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Why the Tantians are there? Why the rest of our are there? Why the upper Tantian is here? Why the middle Tantian is here? Why? We talk about Qigong science, isn't it? Right? We say that Qigong, we insist that Qigong is a form of science. Then why are the Tantians there? Do you know that? So these are the basic things. What's behind Chifu formation? What is the importance of Chifu formation? These are the things. And blind faith, what do you mean by blind faith? Like uh, I was telling, uh, when I gave a talk about um, information field and chip field. So I mentioned things like, uh, okay, you can try to have fun, right? Stand in circles. And practice. A few days after that, a friend asked me, Mr. Wing, why you say that uh, you stand in circles, you know, practicing, let's say uh, you have a group of four or five or six or seven or how many people, if you were to stand in circles, you're going to have a much better experience than standing in rows. He said, this is not a uh, found anywhere in the book. I said, this is, this is blind faith. It is not a sin for you to try it out. You tried it out, and then you tell me, where, what's the experience? You, without, any try, without trying it out, and then you say that, no, 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 cannot. Master never say this. 
then that's blind faith. You try it out. We're not asking you to do something, something very dangerous. We're asking you to just shift how you change a little bit on how you stand and you find it as something that is, I don't know how to put it. I would say that that is blind faith. See? Now, what is the biggest lick? That's a relationship between mind and body. The relationship between physiological, physiological needs and societal needs. Huh? And that's the reason why in Mori 1 we say dynamic practice is for the management of emotions. Yep. Dynamic practice is for the management of emotion because management of emotion is one big topic that most people ignore. Or most people do not dwell deep enough. Common things are like, oh, you don't get angry. You have to be kind. You know, ah, you should not get frustrated over minor, minor things or big things or small things. And that is not management of emotions. No. Molly 2, we say dynamic practice is for the cultivation of consciousness. Because dynamic practice is going to allow us to experience what is wholeness. And then from there, we can move on further to get to know what is Tao, what is enlightenment, what is realization. We will have a clear direction where we should go, where we should head to. Because whatever happens on the mind will bring changes to the body and vice versa. This is from the internal classic of uh, Yellow Yellow Emperor, the Bible of Chinese medicine. The Lord is the mind. The Lord is clear. Then all others are peaceful. Live this way, whole life is safe. The Lord is not clear. The mind is chaotic. Twelve officials are in danger. That means that twelve key channels will be in pro in danger. The passages are closed. The physical body is greatly harmed. Life is a disaster. So we stress a lot on how to manage the emotions and how we move towards wholeness. Now. How do you manage the emotions? We make use of Chinese medicine, the theory in Chinese medicine, in uh, what we call resolving an emotion with another emotion. Uh, sometimes uh, not not so frequent. Once in a blue moon, we friends who ask me, when, hey, Mr. Wing, when are you going to introduce level three? I said, I've already introduced level three when we talk about module one. Serious. This is module one. Those who have practiced level three before try to understand why the arrangement, why the sequence of practice of the internal organs. No explanation given. But you, you try to understand why and then you would understand what I mean by this. What we said in the management of emotions, they are the essence of 5-1 form, not the physical exercise. No. What are the roots to progress? We are talking about progressing in practice towards wholeness. So how do you define progress? Or what, what is the route that you're supposed to take? Do we practice level after level? Okay, level one, then level two, then level three? Or layer, or what we call layer after layer. 
level one, level two, level three, many people who have reached level three, they have very little experience of level one. They ended up as a gymnast. They can execute the exercises in a very nice manner, but they don't have that experience inside them, the experience they're supposed to have. It's not there. What do you mean by layer after layer? Layer after layer means you dwell deep enough. You dwell deep enough into the practice. Now lift chi up. Can you do push-pull to the level of reaching wholeness? Which, to me, I don't think this is difficult. Particularly after what we had introduced last year, this is getting easier and easier. And if you were practicing stuff like uh, uh, standing meditation, straight leg sitting to loosen up the lumbar, are you able to loosen your lumbar? What is stopping us? Hmm? Sunglasses means blind faith. We keep doing without knowing why do we do this? And what is the reason, what, what is supporting our practice? Have a look into learning outcome and the minimal requirements. See, when we go to college and all this, we send our children to college, you know, there's a learning outcome. Anything that you study, anything that you practice, there's a learning outcome. What is the learning outcome? of, let's see, lift chi up, body mind form, five one form. And what are the minimal requirements? Huh? Means the passing mark. What are the minimal, what are the passing marks for lift chi up, body mind form? Five one form. They were there, laid down by the founder of Zhenang Qi Gong. What are the learning outcome of uh, lift chi up? Or what are the minimal requirements for lift chi up? Anyone can answer that? There are four. Anyone? Hello. The four. Number one, you must be able to feel the pressure, the changes of pressure when you do the push pull. Yeah? That's simple, isn't it? Number two, you must be able to control the open close mentally. So let's say I do open close here in front of my body. But I visualize my head in open clothes and I can experience it. I visualize my toes, my feet are in open clothes and I can experience it. That's number two. Number three, if someone were to point at me from the back, from my back, without touching me, I can tell oh, where you are pointing at. Number four, you should have developed your extrasensory perception. Dr. Pang even added in another statement for ESP. He said, in Lift Chi Up, you're practicing external Hun Yuan. You're practicing on the movement of Qi in and out of your membranous tissue. So, your nerve endings are all here. Plenty of nerve endings on the outside of our body. So if you are doing minimally well and lift chi up, there is no way that you have yet to develop the ESP. This is not from me. This is from the founder. But do we look into this learning outcome? 
what is important in dynamic practice. So in dynamic practice, we move a lot. Yeah. So let's say you compare this with playing tennis or even a simple thing like jogging. Do you have skill set for table tennis, tennis or jogging? Yes. You have to follow that technical skill so that you'll be able to enjoy it more. Do we do that in our dynamic practice? Most people are not bothered about the correct execution. Serious. And because of that, you find that it is very difficult for many people to reach the minimal outcome or the learning outcome or the minimal requirements or in what we call pass the examination, the exam paper laid down by the founder. So how to progress faster? Last year, we introduced Weighted training means you added weight. Huh? Not during your practice. Huh? <laughs> Just that you added weight to prepare yourself for the practice, for the Qigong exercises. And we found that very, very useful, very, very helpful. We're going to introduce something more this year. As usual, we try it out ourselves. We try it out on some friends who are serious and the practice, and then we see. And we only introduce it openly when we are very sure of the safety and also the efficacy, the efficiency of the practice. Now, we always say this, how to settle a problem without knowing its existence. So in the course, we also introduce the way for us to pick up the problems. How do you know whether you're executing an exercise correctly? How? Simple trick, look inside the mirror. Look inside the mirror. The mirror is the, the most honest guy. We will not talk nicely to you. See? And uh, how do you know that uh, emotionally you are calm or not? Whether you are following our course or not, we will introduce you something, a simple exercise. Tonight or this morning, <laughs> this afternoon, on how you can pick up whether you are calm or not. Okay? Now, do you have any question? Advertisement over. Any question? Oh, the exercises. We stress a lot on uh, the foundation work. Standing meditation, straight leg sittings. Next to them, uh, lift you up and the stretches. Okay. But the real important stuff, uh, standing meditation and SLS. Say a few words about this, the importance of the foundation work. Have you heard about Guo Yunsen? Guo Yunsen is a uh, very, he was a very famous, very, is, he was a, a very powerful boxer, martial artist. 
Jing Yiquan, Grandmaster. Okay, so when he was in his seventies, someone introduced him a young boy at the age. Uh, so this boy was only thirteen, but the boy was sick, asthmatic, very skinny, but very smart. So Guo Yunshen said that, mm, okay, I make an ex exception. I'll take him as a student. And he treated this student in a very different manner. He always sat on his bed, and then he would insist the boy to stand to practice standing meditation next to him. Every day you do this. Now, for those of you who have uh, practiced standing meditation before, seriously, then you understand that, oh gosh, this is probably the most boring exercise in the whole world. Despite the fact that we have introduced tricks of how you can pull yourself through, many people don't really do that, or they only do it for a short while and then they forget about it. But those who persisted on it, they see the results very rapidly. Okay, coming back to the story. So, you know, boy, teenager, stood there the whole day. Wow, this is boring. Look out the windows. Whoa, all the rest of them are sparring, you know. They are pushing hands. They are doing this. They are jumping up and down. They are punching front and back. So, he could not take it. So, every day after the practice, he would go and ask other students there, hey, you teach me how to do this, how you do that. Before long, Guo Yinsen found out, so call him there. You have a grandmaster in front of you, like the heavenly God, but you don't learn from your grandmaster. You go and learn from the monkeys there. Are you nuts? If I caught you again, I'll chase you out. So after that, the boy stopped, stopped learning from other students. He would diligently practice next to the master. And who was the boy? Wang Xiangzai. Wang Xiangzai, she created a form of martial art by the name of Yi Chen. From Xing Yi Chen, he inherited the knowledge of his master and he created another form, Yi Chen. So that's the importance of foundation work. Yes, I know this is boring, but don't worry, we'll teach you how to cheat <laughs> to make it more interesting. Any more questions? Okay, now if there's no more question, we get into a short practice, right? Very short practice and uh, a practice where we are going to see. What do you mean by saying that how to settle a problem without knowing its existence? Okay, you close your eyes now, take two deep breaths and feel whatever you can feel inside your body. Whatever you can feel. You cannot feel anything, also it's feeling not feeling anything. <laughs> okay. Now, open your eyes. We're going to get into some uh, very short practice. Okay. What we do is that we are going to move our hands up as if they're inside the body, going up, down, and then we are going to close our arms, move down, 
visualize as if you have gone through the soles, come up, bring it to the front, open, okay? And then we do open close. And our open close is synchronized with the breath. You breathe in, spread out the arms widely, you breathe out. Okay? Breathe in and breathe out. Simple, isn't it? All right. Sit upright, relaxingly. Look straight to the front, relaxingly. You are looking out from the middle of the brain in a rounded manner. Conscious of the space in front of you, behind you, on your left and right, on top of your head, and beneath your feet. Conscious of the space outside and inside the body. Pull in the vision and close your eyes gently. Take a deep breath, breathe out and relax, relax. Move your hands up inside the body. Hands passing chest. Going all the way up through the crown into the blue sky. Lower the arms sideways into straight line. Close the arms. Move the hands down inside the body. Hands passing abdomen into the thighs and knees, legs and feet to the other side of the earth. Bring the arms up sideways into straight line. Close the arms. Spread out the arms, open up into a ball of chi. Do your open close now. Remember, synchronize with your breath. Spread out the arms on breathing in. Restore the arms on breathing out.
slip in all the surrounding chi. And put your hands on your navel. Take deep breath. And feel inside your body. Question number one, can you tell the difference before and after? Before the practice and after the practice? Yes or no? Yes is one, no is two. How long did we practice? Two minutes. So this is fast food Qigong, super fast food. It only takes you two minutes. Some clients, serious illness, and uh, they only have very short period of time to practice, maybe in the evening or maybe in the morning. They cannot squeeze out something, some time in between. You expect them to practice half an hour, three times a day? No. And this will be the choice for them. Why? Because the Lord is the one that's commanding our life activities. Many times I just ask my clients to practice this five times a day. Every time you practice, you don't have to practice so many. Ten. And the most important part is to recognize the difference and to extend that calmness throughout the whole day, to recognize that calmness and extend it throughout the whole day. The problem with most practitioners is that they don't dwell into this. When they are practicing, they feel calmness. After the practice, oh, Immediately, I have to rush to my job. I have to do this. I have to do that. They forget about it. They forget about the importance of the state of calmness. So sometimes I tell them, you do it five times a day. No excuse because each, if you do away with the mechanism to open up the, the, the uh, what it called the chi inside the body, you just do this 10 open close, it will take you maybe about 80 seconds. So this is something very useful. Okay. So uh, you don't have any question, then uh, we, we end here. If you're interested in our course, write to me. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.